What's up everyone? It's Joey, Blush Response, and today I'm reviewing the Nord Wave 2. Let's get right into it. All right, so we're here with the Nord Wave 2. Uh, this is one I'm really excited about. I think it's a beautiful sounding synth, and it's something uh, you don't see often in our kind of techno sequencing weirdness vibe. Um, it's really something for keyboard players or advertised as such, but I think the synth engine is quite powerful and I want to demonstrate some of that. First off, I just think it's really beautiful sounding. Like a simple pads, here's a pad preset. And this beautiful pitch bender. First thing I want to say about the Nord Wave 2 and Nord in general is that you really feel the strength of the build quality. And what I mean by that is like this thing feels expensive to touch. That's that's the best way I could describe it. It just feels right. Um, every control feels good. It looks good. Everything is well thought out. Amazing piece of hardware here. Um, so basically, you have four layers which are complete synth voices. Uh, and you have like analog emulation, wavetable, which are really just single cycle digital waveforms. You have some FM synthesis, which goes up to four operators. And you have samples. Think of it more like a rompler. You can't do much editing of the samples uh, once you have them in the machine. There's a companion app that lets you edit your samples. But once they're in the machine, that's how they are. And you, can, you can't do much. You can do sort of like an attack skip thing, which lets you say you have a, a sampled pad. You could skip the attack phase. Or you could just play the sample uh, the way it is. Uh, and you have... You have a multi-mode filter, uh, you have a freely assignable envelope, and you have a single LFO per layer. Uh, that doesn't seem like much, but there's more than meets the eye. There's also a really beautiful effects section. So let's, let's initialize the patch. Uh, and the, one of the things I want to emphasize is that this synthesizer interface is one of the best I've ever used. Uh, the actual best I've ever used is the Nord Lead 3, and this one is the first Nord after that that I think really approaches that, because every control is laid out perfectly. You don't need to go through any menus really for any of the functions. They're true to they are. So here's a basic saw. We'll just do like a, a quick FM sound. And I want to stress that I think this synthesizer is really beautiful sounding. Something about it just speaks to me. Like there, there's a basic reverb setting. And those are beautiful FM pads, in my opinion. Add in a bit of the effects. You have tremolo, pan, ring modulation, phaser, chorus, ensemble, and vibrato. We'll use chorus in this case. There's something really, really satisfying about the Nord pitch bender. It's this wooden stick. They're known for it. it it just, it's the best pitch bender there is. There's no competition here. It's so playable. So, okay, we've got this really uh, aggressive FM pad. Let's layer it now. So we'll turn on layer two. And you hear both are playing at the same time, but let's edit layer two. And we'll go to, we'll go to category, and you can see we have different categories for the oscillator type. Uh, in this case, we'll do maybe a sync saw. 
will sign an LFO to that. And by the way, the LFOs go to 500 hertz. A little bit over 500 hertz. That's absolutely beautiful in my eyes. So if you want to make like really epic pads, this is this is one of them. You get drive in the filter section. Let's just hear that quickly. We'll turn on a brand new layer. Now layer C is soloed. So, I mean, this thing is a virtual synth. It's not uh, analog. And so I'm thinking like, who is this competing with? Cause it, you know, it has a keyboard. It's not, even though it has a sequencer, it's not for the groove box types. To me, this fits in with something like a Dave Smith OB6 or uh, a Prophet X or a similar kind of polysynth vibe, a Prophet 5. I can only think of sequential right now for whatever reason, but that's who it's competing with, and I think it really shines well in that category. So let's that, let's check out the filter drive. That's one, two, three. That's a nice overdrive. The thing I find about this is it's almost impossible to make it sound bad. Now we'll turn on the two band EQ. That also has a drive. So you can get some pretty, some pretty nasty stuff. And this is just with a saw wave. Let's do like a super saw. If you want to get really aggressive with the trance, you can. <laughs> Not that I would, but it gets that distorted vibe, which I really appreciate. Uh, there's also delay. Let's try. Let's try this with one of the wavetables. I'll turn off the drive for now. Uh, the wavetables are really beautiful sounding, but they're single cycle waves. Keep that in mind. So you're not gonna get like the smooth Waldorf style morphing. And you have just a few selections. You have you have a, a bell section, an acoustic section, digital organ keys, and that's it really. And each of them have about 10 waves. Some more, some less. For me, the real action is with the FM and the sampling. Uh, the stock sample library is just kind of your bread and butter rompler stuff. But what's funny is they also have uh, some stuff from the Fairlight in here that sounds exactly like you think it would. So if you want to cover ministry, now you can. Um, and of course you can import your own samples. It's got this really nice Mellotron stuff. You would be thinking this doesn't apply to techno, but there's ways to mix in... Uh, the kind of sample playback stuff with more synthetic sources to get weird hybrid type sounds. Like, okay. Here's the pad we were just making, right? Uh, now, uh, I'm going to assign wheel morph. So to do that, you hold this button here. You see there's a morph section. You hold wheel, and you just turn any parameter. And now, when I turn up the mod wheel, now you've got the Mellotron in there. Here's without. Here's 
Let me lower these a bit just so you hear more dramatically without. So that's, it's, it's just beautiful for me, honestly. Sounds fucking incredible. Um, and I'm finding myself using it for a lot of pads and other kinds of things. Slow evolving, morphing sounds. There's just some, some beauty in this engine that it speaks to my ears. It tickles my brain in the right way. And the reverb is simply incredible sounding. The thing is, uh, the thing that disappoints me is that the modulation does not have so many routings. And that is a bit of a disappointment for sure. Like, uh, I would want to do stuff like have the LFO effect, you know, envelope amounts or envelope uh, decay or release, stuff like this, or, or have it affect the effects. Uh, and that's not possible. And that's where I think uh, Nord have missed out. But but you have to think of the intention again. This synthesizer is for players. It's not for people who necessarily want to automate everything. So keep that in mind. But theoretically, you could assign the wheel to anything and then use an external LFO like from an Octatrack to modulate mod wheel and then you're getting into really heady spaces. It also has smart routings for things like vibrato. It just has a dedicated thing. You can assign it to aftertouch. There's the vibrato. And okay, let's take this boring Mellotron sample and make it really crazy. So we'll bring in the delay, set the delay to analog mode, which Nothing is ever more than a shift command away. It's really, really well thought out. This interface is beautiful. Like if it, I just reviewed the op six, if the op six had an interface like this with every parameter, it would be one of the greatest things ever. And I think that's where really, where Nord really excels is their instrument design over everything. It's just perfectly designed interfaces, performability. It's a joy to play with. And I'm a big fan of the Nords. I had the Lead 2X, the Lead 3, the modular G2 engine, and the G1. I still have the G1. I would have kept the G2, but I don't like the engine. I like having controls. So eventually I would love to go back and get a keyboard because it has all the knobs. Let's hear that delay. And the delay is a cool thing. You can put different effects in the feedback path, and these effects are unique to the delay. They don't take up the other effects. So you have a chorus of vibrato and an ensemble. We'll try with the chorus. You can shift on ping pong. And see, like right now, I would have loved to assign an LFO to the delay time. Unfortunately, you can't. Let's lower the reverb. But here's what we can do. We'll do it with the wheel. and get some real weirdness going. Especially when you bring in that reverb again. And the cool thing is you can remove the filter from the chain.
Now there are definitely some things missing from here from the older Nords, like the Nord Lead 3 had a sick dual multi-filter mode, it had a comb filter and other things, and those would be amazing if they were in here. Like maybe you could you could do it uh, by maybe adding it in, like pressing shift and filter type, and then you access a second page of filters. That would really bring this to the next level because the actual synthesis part is is just stymied by a couple things. And, and those things would really take it to the next level. Anyway, we're gonna save this, because I might use it later in a sound set. It's quite nice. Now it's saved. So we'll go to another patch, initialize that. Initialize. Now I wanna show you the LFO here. Once again. This thing is beautiful sounding. Put a, like a super saw under that. using the Moog style filter emulation. And just some beautiful sounds there. We'll dirty it up a bit. There's a bit of a volume drop when you introduce the drive, but you know, you just mitigate that in other ways. I'm not actually feeling the drive right now, so we're gonna put in some effects. Here's the ring modulator. It's fully wet. It's really what you would want from a ring modulator, in my opinion. And that's the thing, it's like, there's so many beautiful sounds here. See, I switched the delay to ping pong and put a chorus in the path there. Now an ensemble. We'll put a vibe in there, actually. and we'll filter it out so that the dry comes through a bit more. So to that end, I say for analog emulation, it's, it's really special as well. You know, a real analog synth is always gonna sound a bit more analog, but this really nails some of those sounds you want and in a mix you'd never be able to tell. And that's again where the strengths of this synth lie because you can combine a sound like that with something completely digital through the layering, and you can also use the wheel morph to introduce the layering. So, okay, we got two layered. I'll make an FM sound. And we'll send that the free envelope to oscillator control, which is the FM amount in this case. verb again. We can even turn on the arpeggiator.
Here's where I need three hands, though. <laughs> okay, I did that with my face. Um, so now they're all held. Engage the core all mode on the reverb. And this has smart controls, so like any section on here, the filter, the effects, whatever, you can do them individually, completely separately, or you can have them be group effects, so groups of layers can go through them. With the delay in analog mode. It's just beautiful sounding in my opinion. Kind of, it captures that cold digital 80s vibe, the virtual analog vibe, and the the warm analog vibe. It's really a chameleon of sound. So I appreciate that. This is just two layers. There's so much you could do here. There's also a sequencer uh, that works together with the arpeggiator, and we're gonna take a look at that momentarily. Some glide. These faders are really special. They really bring a lot of performability to it. Yeah. Kind of getting our Berlin school on here. I'm a big fan of... of People like Steve Roach, Robert Rich. And I feel these vibes when I play this one. I like the stage reverb. Let's bring up the delay feedback on the pad. Play in analog mode. Yeah. Just let it decay. So I've got a little sequence set up using uh, pattern mode and all four parts and I want to demonstrate you a bit of the performance you can do using the keyboard as well as the sequencer. So I've got a techno kick, some hats, and a techno sequence. vibing pretty hard with those and then on the fourth layer I've got a patch uh, using a pad that I can play live over.
if I bring up the mod wheel, it can affect the hats. the sequence. Play with the delay. affecting the filter on the hat. keyboard I can play different notes on the sequence transpose in real time which is cool See if I go to pattern mode, you see here are my notes. I can add more. Length in the kit. ambient techno here. Yeah, 
later. So beautiful. Also an FM sound.
see I just selected both layers now, now I'm playing. Nordwave 2. So that was really dope. I think the Nordwave 2 is one of the most beautiful sounding synths I've ever heard. I don't give away that kind of praise often, but something about the engine just tickles my brain in the right way and it feels good on every setting. I love the sound. I love the engine. I wish there was more of the engine. I would love to see a desktop synth with no from Nord with a more expanded engine with more modulation possibilities because the things this can do just sound amazing and I want more of it. I need just just more possibilities. I you know maybe bring back the filter from the Nord Lead 3, some of the expanded FM modes, just give me more stuff. As it stands now it's a great synth for players, but it's lacking some depth for heavy tweaking. And that's a shame because all the tweaks sound great. As always, I'm going to have samples from this jam and more on my Patreon. Don't forget to smash like here. Peace out. Peace out.